Hello everybody, my name is Daniel o. I'm working for Red Hat as a technical marketing major. In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the four things Cloud Native Java must provide as technical tips. So Java must include uh, the, at least a uh, full benefit to complete in the era of Cloud Native Microservices and serverless application. So let's get started. So Java is still the pervasive development language among enterprise developers, even though it's not developer prepared cloud native runtime such as Golang and Python, Node.js, etc. But it but also it's falling behind the other languages according to GitHub's uh, October the recent survey. Because Java and enterprise Java is three, an application built on the traditional Java stack. Even it is optimized for cloud-native environment that requires more memory and takes longer to start than an application built on other popular languages. And with this modern platform, uh, as known as Kubernetes, Istio Service Mesh, and Knative event, the, the need to have a smaller runtimes that can be scaled up and down and even down to zero is becoming more and more important capability uh, in our enterprise architect architecture. So what should uh, cloud native Java look like in order to enable people to develop, build, learn, debug, and deploy in an immutable infrastructure without a steep learning curve for development standpoint? And how easily can developers evolve cloud native Java application for serverless workload on demand? So that's why new cloud native Java runtime needed to provide there are at least four major benefit uh, for developers to build cloud native microservices and serverless Java application. So let's take a look at that. What kind of uh, the new benefit and capability job, the cloud native Java must provide? The first thing, the new cloud native Java uh, framework. Uh, increased uh, de development productivity because developer as a race looking for the better way uh, uh, with, with and convenient way uh, to write their function and business requirement as daily work. For example, they are looking forward to uh, some kind of uh, zero configuration capability and live coding, which means that whenever they change the code and that uh, the new cloud native Java platform or framework uh, 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 the make the build packaging and deploy the application, the change code, uh, automatically uh, without any intervention, intervention of the developers on manual stuff, and uh, uh, it will give some easy way to inject a new capability like an extension or a dependency on the Maven uh, Java uh, structure to implement cloud native application. And another uh, requirement and a benefit for new cloud native Java uh, enable Java developer to build reactive programming with the same uh, application that already built on a traditional microservice application architecture. So for example, so developer must be able to use event burst or burst X uh, to uh, implement a reactive application as well as traditional imperative application to explore the RESTful API uh, to address uh, request response uh, mechanism of our HTTP uh, protocol. At the same time, uh, they just print some annotation mechanism on top of your method or class and then that application will be processed as a reactive application rather than traditional imperative application. So what is the important thing for developer? Because a uh, lot of company already aware of the, uh, the importance of a reactive application or uh, event-driven architecture to uh, uh, more efficient uh, system, make the efficient system uh, along with their business requirement. So, this is a big burden for developer because they needed to learn the new technology stack. Like, oh, I am Java developer more than 15 years, but now I needed to learn about new technology stack like a Node.js or Vertex. 
So this is a big problem for many, many of Java developers. But it, once, what if the new cloud native Java provide this capability to enable React programming at the same time? There is no uh, hurdle to jump in the React programming plus event driven application implementation. The third uh, cloud native Java must provide uh, the anytime uh, the J the cloud native Java can optimize the serverless workload. So developer will evolve existing microservices to serverless application when the cloud native Java runtimes provide super fast starting times and also very small tiny memory footprint. So for example, so a lot of company uh, keep monitoring or uh, the user metrics uh, for a specific period, like a six months, and they figured out, okay, we have only 5% or even 10% of our application, uh, no uh, uh, workload during the uh, uh, last six months because this application can be uh, invoked for specific uh, requirement like a subscription or a bill payment just monthly based. In that case, that application uh, shouldn't be running all the time to reduce your infrastructure costs, specifically after COVID-19 outbreak. So everybody uh, work from home, and which means you need to save your infrastructure maintenance cost. And then maybe the serverless architecture or capability is a good answer for that companies. So. Anytime any application can be should be evolved to serverless application. And point is uh, how to make it possible because some application uh, needed to start up maybe 30 seconds and a huge memory footprint, specifically uh, along the Java dynamic behavior. That's not good. That's not uh, definitely does not fit in the serverless application. So that's why new cloud native Java must be provide uh, the optimization capability for serverless workload. And the the last thing of cloud native Java must be provide is the uh, 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 the easy way to adopt the common standard open source projects and tool because the developer needed to integrate new standard open source project or a tool or a both uh, to create or write a cloud native app Java application. For example, so I need to deploy this application to Kubernetes with the from my local environment to the remote Kubernetes cluster. And I also uh, integrate the event burst from Vertex, or I need to expose the REST easy, or I need to integrate messaging server and a backend Kafka server. And I need to print the monitoring and observation capability into my cloud native Java application using Jaeger, Kiali, Prometheus, or Grafana tools and pre the infinite span capability to use in memory data grid. And there are more and more uh, new tools and projects based on open source uh, came up every single day. So problem and more concern about uh, adopting this new technology, how easy to how easy developer adopts this capability into their cloud native Java application. So that's why uh, the the adoption, the easy adoption, the common open source project and tool. This is one of the required capability uh, that cloud native Java must provide. So once you uh, are keeping this criteria in mind, the cloud native Java architecture consideration uh, will be so clear and then you needed to design for running containerized application for your DevOps initiative and cloud native platform at scale and speed. In the end, uh, this will enable the Java developers to build cloud native Java application based on architecture such as 
high performing cache or event driven slash reactive and serverless on the immutable infrastructure, aka Kubernetes and OpenShift, with all of the expected benefits. And also, uh, you got uh, the, the nice outcome uh, that is will be effective in enabling developers to use the power and the history of Java in a very new environment. So don't hesitate uh, to reach out to me by uh, following my Twitter. And if you have any question about a new cloud native Java application development or architecture and anything else, thank you for watching.